Hello everyone, welcome to Pharma Fun for us to another video on clinical data management. This is the second video of this series and today we are going to talk about case report form. Now before I go ahead and you know before I forget telling you hit that subscribe button so that you know you will be updated for whatever comes your way whatever I am posting on this channel so that you know if you are actually planning to learn clinical data management this would definitely be helpful for you right. So yeah, you all know the agenda. We are going to study about uh, oh. right. The agenda is introduction, full case report form, CRF development and tracking, and CRF scanning. Case report form. What is this? Okay. Before going ahead, my name is Adi Dunisa Begum. I am a data scientist by profession. I have done my post graduation in pharmacy. I have worked as a clinical data manager as well as a data analyst. Uh, like I said, now I am a data scientist. Right? I think that's all. That's a lot about myself. Now coming to case report form or CRS. What is CRS? It is designed to collect the patient data in a clinical trial. If you want to collect patient data in a clinical trial, CRF is very useful. CRF is the basically the report form that is for collecting the patient details. Now, its development, what is its development? It presents it's a significant part of the clinical trial and this can affect the study success. So there are some persons, they, what do they do is they capture some of this data on the CRF which is collected during their participation in clinical trial. And this is again, so I'll be telling you a few of the names, of, you know, of these organizations who you should remember. It is good to remember them. So that you know you understand who have laid what kind of guidelines. So there is um, you know the international conference on harmonization guidelines for good clinical practices. You might want to note that now. You can just write an abbreviation for that. International conference on harmonization guidelines for good clinical practices. You don't really it does not have to be this on the internet but this is just for you to remember. This way you can remember. What is it again? International conference of harmonization guidelines for good clinical practices and they have defined CRS as printed optical or electronic document designed to record all of the protocol required information to be reported to the sponsor on each trans subject. That is what case report form is. So case report form it definitely requires designing, enormous planning and attention to minute detail. Designing a CRF is crucial and in a clinical trial, it will aid in assessing the safety and efficacy of the medicinal product accurately. CRF should be designed for optimal collection of data in accordance with study protocol compliance. Remember, everything here has to go according to a particular protocol. So we have a study protocol compliance. So CRF reporting has to go according to that. And there are also regulatory requirements and this will enable the researcher to test the hypothesis and you know, answer the trial related questions. So a well designed CRF should represent, what else should it represent? The essential content of the study protocol and in ideal situation, CRF is designed only once the study protocol is finalized. It can be prepared either concurrently along with the protocol development but this can, you know, result in many versions. So that is why we need to you know, so that the version is controlled, timing of the design process will also be an improve as both the approaches have pros and cons of their own. So it is increasingly recognized that the design of the CRF, so it could be a paper form or it could be electronic. It's a key quality step in ensuring the data required, the protocol, regulatory compliance, and you know, safety needs, studies, specific hypothesis attributes, site workflow, cross checking of data within a form or you know, across different forms and addresses. So, the CRF used in clinical research it reduces messy clinical realities. So, what does it do? It rounds the integers and categorical answers. Right? So, that's how it is done. Then you have two types. Very famous types, they are electronic and paper based. So electron, uh, paper, electronics we will discuss in the next video, but when we are talking about the paper CRF, it's the traditional way of data capture and a better option of studies are very small or you know, very in design. So, ECRS, uh, ECRFs, that is electronic CRFs, they are specifically used when the data is very large and you know, your study is also very large. 
that is when you can use ECRF and that's what we'll be discussing in the next video. Now, if we want to talk about development and tracking or a standard case report form design, what kind of a design does it have? So, designing a CRF, of course, it's an art and should be based on scientific practices. And the design should be implemented keeping the end user in mind. So, while designing, all important sections of the CRF should be included with care. Always, it is worth to remember the insufficient or uh, inaccurate data that will definitely cause a problem and it can you know, prove expensive during analysis so it is advisable to have a standard operating procedure for crf preparation and for the best practices again like i keep on saying that right the primary objective of crf designing is gather complete and accurate data again complete and accurate data imagine in medicine you are having and it is it does not have proper data around right so it is about lives, so we cannot play with it. So that is the reason why it is important to be accurate. And of course, this won't go ahead without you know, getting checked by the authorities, from the FDA, any authorities. And the authorities won't really pass us if there is not adequate information here, right? So you might have to just go over and do it all over again if the data is not accurate, and that would again be expensive, cost you a fortune. So that is the reason I would suggest it has to be accurate. Ideally, it should be well structured and you know, easy to complete without such much assistance and should collect the data at the highest volume. Always, minimum amount of data needed to answer the study hypothesis should be collected, avoiding collection of elaborate, unimportant information. So, for ordinary data, what you can do is you can ensure uniformity and clarity among data. Adequate explanations should be provided here, adjacent to CRF fields. So whenever you are mentioning a CRF field, it is important that you mention the explanation for that. Capturing the same piece of data in more than one place on the CRF should be avoided. In other words, CRF should collect in sufficient detail without ambiguity. And at the same time, should avoid redundancy and avoid capturing unwanted details. So trying the perfect codes to ensure balance between effective data collection and structuring the CRF. To support accurate data into this essential collecting the data in the coded form whenever possible is ideal as it facilitates data entry and helps the statistician in data interpretation and analysis. Important part of CRF is an informative header and footer which can be customized. So in general, the header includes protocol ID and site code, subject ID patient initials, etc. Footer, this is for the header. The footer would include investor signature, date of signature, version number, and page number. So this is how it goes. Now, what else you can you do here? If you want to enhance the you know, easy reading and accurate data entry, a crowded CRF layout should be preferred. So placing too many details on the same page makes CRF look cluttered, makes data entry difficult, which eventually leads to increasing data discrepancies. There are a few points that I would like to mention. If this is understood to you, then see, we have some CRF guidelines to be followed. I'll tell you about the scanning of the CRF, but before that, there are a few guidelines that we have to, you know, bear in mind while designing a CRF. So use of consistent formats. This is very important. Font style. This can include font style, font sizes. So these have to be consistent throughout the CRF. Next one is selection of portrait versus landscape. It depends upon what kind of project you are working on, you know, with the combination layouts. Use of clear, concise questions, the type of questions that you frame, they have to be clear and concise and with instructions. Visual cues such as boxes that clearly indicate the place and format of data. To be recorded should be provided to the person 
recording the data as much as possible. Use the option of circling the answers and that is also very important. So basically what CR, if you can just download, I would actually show you a CRF form example searching on the internet, right? So that will be really helpful. So circling of answers should be limited in numbers. It's hard to interpret, of course. So we can use check boxes instead of circling answers. Clear guidance about skip patterns like what to skip and what not to skip should be mentioned. We can also provide boxes or separate lines to hold the answers. It directly informs the data recorder where to write, enter the response, and helps to differentiate it visually from other endpoints. Some other things would be separate the columns with thick lines by uh, you know, provide bold and italicized instructions, minimize free text responses, position only specified density of questions on each page. Page numbering also, if necessary, should be consistent. Avoid using click check all that apply. So as it holds assumptions about the clinical data, so specify the unit of measurements, also indicate the number of decimal places. Use a standard date format throughout the CRF. So suppose if you are using date, month, year, use the same throughout the CRF, do not change it. Use pre-coded answers such as yes, no, male, female, method of administration of medicine and severity of adverse event, wherever possible. Use no carbon required copies to ensure exact replica of CRF. Okay, so this is also another point. Now, yeah, I think there are these are the few points that I would like to mention. And what we can do now is, and after that, the CRF is scanned and then you know it is received by the CRF tracking system and archived electronically as backup into an image database by designated CDF clinical data collector. Let's just go to Google and search for a CRF. Okay, let's see some examples of CRFs. So here you can see these are some CRFs. So these are to be filled by the patients who are going in for the clinical trials so these are some templates for clinical research uh, sorry case report forms okay so yeah these are some examples you can still find some and i think that's all i had to say for today and this is all about case report forms so if you have any doubt if you haven't understood anything put it in the comment section i will be really happy to reply Thank you very much for being with me throughout this video. Do not forget to subscribe again. Right? Subscribe and share if you feel this is important. Thank you very much. Goodbye. See you in the next video. Happy learning till then.